I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel. Today I'm going to be playing a tune called I'll Fly Away. This is an old gospel tune written in 1924 by Albert Bromley and it's become a standard in bluegrass and it's particularly well known because it was sung by Alison Krauss in the film Oh Brother Where Art Thou? So I'm going to give you four versions of this tune. Um, first one, the very basic melody. Second one, the melody with some grace notes. The third one with some shuffles and the fourth one with some uh, double stops and fancy bits. So let's get started on the basic melody. So we're in the key of G and if you want you can give it a little kick in and then we start. Let's just hear what that sounds like with some backing. So, it's a pretty straightforward melody, um, I think it probably needs quite a few drones, so first bar, we're playing a drone on the note, uh, on the string below, the melody note, so we're doing D drones and G drones, and D drones again, G again, same thing again. Here we've got an A and a D together. Then second half we have a D drone under the D melody. Then G drone. And then as in the first line. Given a, a little slide down, so it's take going from a B natural just to a, almost to a B flat. So um, you don't have to put all of the drones in all of the time. You can put some of them in some of the time. Um, if you're going to play the tune twice, then maybe you'd leave it mostly clean the first time and add some the second time just for variation. Uh, another thing you can do for variation is a lot of grace notes and these are mostly hammer-ons and little, little notes that come before the melody notes. So the very first note you do an open A and then hammer the first finger on. Same again. And then we, we're doing we're just flicking the second finger on and then another hammer-on. Say um, the melody note, and then those two grace notes. Same again. And then a hammer on from the F sharp to the G. Next note, we're doing a first and second finger hammer on. Third finger and first finger. Three, one, open. So again, you have the choice as to which of these you put in. You certainly don't need to put all of them in. In fact, you don't need to put any of them in. 
but I think it adds a lot to a nice uh, slow steady melody like this to put in quite a few grace notes. So let's hear the version 2 with, the, um, with these grace notes. Now, moving on to version 3, if we want to add some rhythm to this, um, then we can do um, a version of the Georgia Shuffle. So that's the Georgia Shuffle, down, uh, two notes slurred, one accented, and then three notes slurred. So taking this rhythm all the way through, we get something like this. Now, it's probably not a great idea to actually do that rhythm all the way through, as I was doing there. Uh, quite apart from anything else, there are some parts that don't work so well, um, especially when you're trying to do... Um, doing that, because you can't... Uh, unless you're going to uh, add a grace note... Um, You can't actually hear the difference between some of the notes because you're playing a whole load of D's and that grace note doesn't uh, sound very in keeping. So the uh, best idea is only do this exercise of sticking the, the shuffle all the way through the melody as practice and um, don't actually do it the whole, the whole way. But nevertheless I'm going to try and do it the whole way uh, as, it, as I said um, with the backing and see what it sounds like. So that does work. Um, it would work particularly well if you were playing backing for someone else, uh, behind a singer or maybe behind someone else's solo, although you'd want to bring the volume down a bit. Um, so it's a useful thing to be able to add to any tune like this, um, but as I say, I wouldn't actually do it all the way through. So let's move on to version 4, um, which is based around the melody, it's like a solo, it's like the old-fashioned type of bluegrass solo where basically they did play the melody and just dressed it up a bit. So we're starting off with a, um, what they call a son of a son of, I'm going to start off with what they call a son of a bitch. One of those, which is done right down at the heel. And then we're going into double stops. Let's go through that 
again. Then the second half starts off the same. Then we've got a line. So let's go through that a bit slower. Starting off with the D with an F sharp under it. Slide down a semitone. And then open D and slide up from the B flat to the B natural. And then, and then we're sliding up from a B flat to a B natural. And then, starting the second half, we've got this classic bluegrass lick with the melody note, the G at the top, and a D underneath it. And then that little shuffle. And this is a real blues phrase. And then um, back to the major feel. So that's um, C with an E under it. Slide that up into third position. Add the third finger on the E string. And then to two and one. And then bring all that down a semitone. Another semitone, down to first position. So I'll just give you that again. And then third position. So this is all in third position. Second finger, fourth finger, and then do the harmonic with your fourth finger. quite hard. Starting in third position with the first finger on that D, third finger below it, and then we're going to slide this down twice in semitones. Down to first position for that, and a little slide for that B. So I'll go through that slowly, then we'll do that with the, the backing uh, up to tempo. See if we can do that up to tempo. enjoyed that. Um, it'll take you a while to master that uh, fourth version I think. So I'm going to play you three times out um, with various bits of the three versions. Hope you enjoy this. Hope to come back for more. See you soon.